Hi, my name is Jacob Pasuala, and the focus of my project is improving the efficiency of the hypersonic pre-cooled combined cycle engine. Starting with my abstract, the idea of the hypersonic pre-cooled combined cycle engine encompasses a wide variety of aircraft engines. So at a fundamental level, this terminology refers to an engine in which multiple operating modes are used to propel the aircraft with a single flow path. Some of the most efficient rocket designs involve using liquid hydrogen as fuel due to it yielding the highest specific impulse. The use of a scramjet engine to use supersonic airflow and combustion and lightweight high temperature alloys such as Inconel X alloys. These features when combined and configured with specific parameters for engine size, fixed temperatures of components and a unique fuselage can comprise a highly efficient hypersonic aircraft that could be more powerful than the state of the art. The goal of the work done here is to identify the key traits in a hypersonic aircraft that if adjusted can increase the power, speed and efficiency of the aircraft the last of which is typically measured in specific impulse. Here's a quick 360 degree view of the aircraft that was designed. It has a scramjet compressor for ambient air and uses a rocket engine with a bell-shaped nozzle as its primary propulsive source. The aircraft carries about 24,600 kilograms of liquid hydrogen fuel and uses compressed ambient air as its oxidizer. In a 6.25 to a one air to fuel ratio. So here's a little bit of background on the current state of hypersonic flight and advances towards greater efficiency. Instead of relying on traditional fuels, some groups, including NASA, have considered using nuclear-based propulsion systems to power their aircrafts. There are two variations of this, which are both being researched as potential power, power sources for deep interstellar missions. Nuclear thermal propulsion, in which thrust is produced from the heat resulting from nuclear fission, and nuclear electric propulsion, in which the thermal energy from nuclear fission is converted into electrical energy, which is then used to power an ion thruster. The latter of the two is especially great for sp space travel, but may be more difficult to use within the Earth's atmosphere. In addition, the nuclear frontier for aircrafts and hypersonic aircrafts is still in its early stages and has a long way to go. Another notable development is the Sabre rocket engine, which essentially is a hypersonic pre cooled combined cycle engine. It uses a turbojet engine and a rocket engine to operate. Furthermore, pre-cooling techniques are being explored in using the fuel in combination with the heat exchanger to cool the air intake as well as engine components. Two of NASA's X-planes, the X-15 and the X-43, served as big inspirations for many of the design choices in the aircraft we modeled. This brings us to the computational section of the presentation. In order to understand how an aircraft can operate at hypersonic speeds, and how the power can be maximized, an aircraft was modeled from scratch in SOLIDWORKS. This approach ignores flight for a specific purpose other than to test the efficiency for flight at hypersonic speeds above anything achieved currently, as well as to obtain a deeper understanding of the critical determinants of efficiency and thrust in an engine design. In this design, only the bare minimum components of the aircraft have been included in order to display at a fundamental level how a hypersonic aircraft functions and how efficiency and power can be increased by adjusting various components after isolating them from the full assembly. For the rocket engine, a parabolic bell-shaped nozzle was selected, as this is often regarded as the most optimal design as it does not restrict the expansion of the exhaust gas. In addition, a scramjet compressor was attached to the engine in order to pressurize the ambient air intake so that combustion of the liquid hydrogen propellant could occur at a lower temperature. The aircraft was designed to be air breathing so that I would not have to carry the added weight of the oxidizer. The compressor on the model is similar to that which is used on a scramjet engine, such as the one located on the X-43. It is a simple adiabatic compressor which relies on the following set of equations. The compressor pressure ratio on the left and the compressor work per mass equation on the right. Inputting the calculated compressor pressure ratio into the compressor work per mass equation, the efficiency of the compressor is rated at roughly 20%. Because the compressor does not use any mechanical parts and the change in temperature is relatively small, it has a low efficiency. This value is used in calculating the oxidizer to fuel ratio. Using an, expo ex using an Excel spreadsheet with multitude of thermodynamic and kinematic equations, the maximum velocity, the maximum altitude, and specific impulse of the aircraft was able to be computed for specified angles of attack. The engine has a burn time of 25 seconds and is capable of traveling at a maximum 
of about 18,500 meters per second. If an extremely high angle of attack is used, such as 25 degrees to the horizontal, the aircraft can reach outer space in roughly 151 seconds. The aircraft produces a maximum specific impulse of 1,540 seconds. The equations used to compute the values in the spreadsheet are those provided by the NASA Glenn Research Center. Here's a quick demonstration of the flow trajectories at 5 degrees, the top image, and 25 degrees, the lower image. And here's a plot of the angle of attack versus the average coefficients of drag and lift. The trend is that there is a greater drag as the angle of attack is increased. Through our analysis, it can be observed that it is relatively simple to achieve flight at high Mach numbers by creating a powerful thrust and limiting the number and size of extraneous components in the aircraft. Simplifying the combustion process by allowing the engine to be air breathing allows for less fuel to be carried and thus lower mass needing to be propelled. In addition, decreasing the temperature of combustion by decreasing the oxidizer to fuel ratio allows for a higher total mass flow rate. This is because although the mass flow rate of fuel, liquid hydrogen, is higher with a higher combustion temperature, the oxidizer to fuel ratio is lower. And thus, the mass flow rate of the oxidizer part is lower, which according to the ratio, makes up a larger part of the total mass flow rate than the liquid hydrogen does. In other words, less fuel is carried on board and the temperatures of the intake combustion chamber and exhaust are regulated to specific values in order to ensure the oxidizer to fuel ratio is maintained and the required thrust is produced to propel the aircraft at the desired speed. The maximum specific impulse of the aircraft is about 1,540 seconds, which is considerably higher than other notable rocket engines, namely the X-15, with a specific impulse of about 276 seconds, or the Saturn V second and third stages, each with a specific impulse of about 421 seconds. Upon researching this topic, it is safe to conclude that temperature and pressure Temperature, pressure, materials, and the size of engine orifices determine the maximum velocity of the aircraft, as well as the efficiency of the aircraft. The model created for this presentation is an example of a combination of initial parameters that can allow for hypersonic flight above Mach 9.6 speeds, which are regarded as the highest speeds achieved by an aircraft in hypersonic flight thus far. Some key conclusions were drawn through the construction of such an aircraft, Constructing airflow through a smaller nozzle allows for a lower mass flow rate, which can allow for a longer burn time. An aircraft of this kind would require equipment to sustain flight at speeds up to almost 18,500 meters per second. Some questions that remain unanswered are the type of aerodynamic heating the fuselage of the aircraft would experience, particularly during re-entry, though it is safe to assume, based on previous flights taken by rockets and aircraft such as the X-15, that the Inconel X alloy would be able to withstand these temperatures, perhaps with the aid of an ablative coating. In order to further this work, a design would have to be made for heat exchangers between the fuel in various parts of the engine and intake in order to maintain the temperatures specified. In addition, this design could serve as a foundation for more complicated aircraft intended for interstellar travel, perhaps depending on some forms of electric propulsion upon exiting Earth's orbit. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. I would like to thank Dean Jean Antoine for supporting my research interests and guiding me in the right direction and answering any and all questions I had. I would also like to thank Dr. Haim Baru and the New Jersey Space Grant Consortium team for the opportunity to work on this project. Thank you.